welcome to Loki Episode 2 Thoughts. Now, as usual, spoilers for games you leading up to this point, including this episode, and I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, especially videos made by new rock star Screenland, Nerdist, CBR, Screen Crush, and Black Nerd Comedy. Some of the Easter egg people said of the first episode that they believe that the Miss Minutes History Lesson video contains self-serving lies told by the TVA. I can absolutely 100% see what they mean, and certainly some of the things said are very suspect. And lest we forget, this is a cinematic universe full of powerful organizations and groups of people lying to the people working for them. S.H.I.E.L.D., HYDRA, yes, I know, I know, not a surprise that HYDRA are liars, but they are an example of an MCU group that lied. The Kree, who lied to Carol, in Thor Ragnarok, it was finally confirmed that you know, what some had already guessed, that Odin was being mighty self-serving in the way he was telling the story of Asgard conquering the Nine Realms. The government lied to Sam when they made John Walker Captain America instead of him, so yeah, I could absolutely see that. I like the fake out that, you know, we think that the first scene is set during the actual Renaissance, but then it's just a red bear. Hi, what's going on? You guys aren't dressed right. Some of us need this, you know. I mean, it's not a surprise that a Loki variant would be into Ren Fair's badass fight scene as Mind Control Commander fights for Loki variant against the Minutemen, set to holding out for a hero by Bonnie Tyler, which apparently... Okay, so very brief off the topic, I swear. Not going to go off on a huge tangent, but apparently the new Guardians of the Galaxy game features as, you know, music to fight to... Holding Out for a Hero by Bonnie Tyler, and, ah, crap, I forget, jo Joan Jett's Bad Reputation. Those are two great choices. Those, I, I may have to play that game. That is, not, not only because of that, but honestly, yeah, almost, even if I didn't, even if I wasn't interested in anything else about the game, just that, that is, those are excellent choices for, for songs to fight to. From the, they're both from the 80s, aren't they? I think they are. And Miss Minutes is now addressing Loki directly and teaching him. And you know, I, saw, I saw one person say that that entire, you know, the, the bit with Loki swiping at Miss Minutes had serious, ah, what's it called again? Who Framed Roger Rabbit energy, and I have to agree. And, you know, one of the Easter egg people pointed out, you can actually hear, you know, it's, it's not just like a hologram, it's not just visually, you can hear her shoes land on things as she jumps around to avoid him swiping, and then, you know, eventually she hides in the monitor, and she's, you know, she, she looks so angry at him, it's just, it's, I don't know, it's just kind of adorable that this tiny little clock person is really angry at the chaos god, that just, yeah. And, and honestly, I really think there's a missed opportunity if Miss Minutes doesn't become some sort of, like, I forget what they're called, but, like, Cortana or Siri or something. I, I honestly, I, I think that it would be so perfect if, if Marvel, or Disney, Disney put out some sort of, like, you know, and, and you, Miss Minutes, pizza places nearby. Sure thing, sugar. I found several. You know, just yeah. I I I don't think I need to draw you a picture or animate a talking clock here. Hunter B fifteen and twenty twelve Loki still don't get along, which makes a lot of sense. You know, I really like that we see several Loki var variants as holograms, and twenty twelve Loki explains the difference in, pow in powers. I mean, Owen Wilson did say in an interview that at least some of the Loki lectures made it into the show. I guess that was one. And I just love how, like, he, you know, Mopius is just standing there saying, okay, and he's got the power to do this. And then Loki interrupts him and says another one. What? And, and he's just, you know, and everyone sh quiets as Loki explains it. And they're all just standing there. Is, is this guy for real? Is he serious right now? <laughs> An audience with the timekeepers is on the table. Keep that focus. Why don't you just travel back to before the timekeepers arrive? I really appreciate that they acknowledge that, and the explanation makes sense. 
I see a scheme, and in that scheme, I see myself. He starts earning his keep. What Loki says does make a lot of sense. This is trap. He's waiting for you outside the set. We have to speak with the timekeepers immediately. And you overplayed your hand. And I like the relationship between Judge Renslayer and Mobius. And, you know, one of these great people suggested that the, you know, Mobius says, oh, I don't remember this. And she's like, you're not the only, I, I forget what the timekeeper maybe. You're not the only timekeeper I have working for me, or something like that. And some of these Drake people have suggested, you know, maybe, let's see, did they think that might be Kang? Or just someone working for Kang? I forget. It's really funny when Loki is running behind Moby, is trying desperately to make his case, and Moby is not. Like, dude, it's done. I'm not, I don't believe you anymore, you know. And Mobius says either he feels bad for Loki, the runt left to, you know, die out in the cold, or maybe he does, maybe he's just that determined to, to catch this guy, or Lady Loki, now that we know. I, I like how Loki keeps asking the, the librarian, and, you know, of course they had to be, even even in the, the you know, technically they're, they're out, they're, the TVA exists outside of time and space, and they have technology from all over the timeline, you know, past and future, not only present, but they still have librarians that shush you if, you, if you're too loud, and, and Loki turns around and shushes her, and, you know, he goes up and he asks, can I see the file on this and this and this, and every, you know, just, those are classified, but what can I get the file on, and, and he gets the file on Loki, so, yeah. And he just utterly ruins Mobius' out. He says afterwards that, okay, maybe it was a slightly clumsy metaphor. I'm pretty sure he just wanted to screw with his lunch. He's hiding in a apocalypses. Makes a lot of sense. You don't trust me. You can trust one thing. I love to be right. And that convinces Mobius. And they go to Pompeii. I think the Latin Loki speaks is accurate. Well, nobody speaks Latin. It's a dead language. You can't speak it. You can read it. And Mobius accepts Loki's theory. I'm, I'm really glad. Like, this is the kind of, you know, this is, this is like, what's, what's that saying? The essence of meetings that could have been an email? Like, they didn't have to go to Pompeii. They didn't have to show us that. You know, that was, like, that's, that cost money. That took time. They had to get costumes, a location, of, uh, uh, what's it called, props, all this stuff, you know, some, 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 you know, some, some of the, some of the FX people had to spend hours working on this distant image of the volcano eruption, but it's such a fun scene, like, just Loki, you know, he's like, nothing matters, and, and he releases all these goats. Run free, my horned friends! I mean, I guess he does feel some s sympathy for other horned... Yeah. And Mobius loves jet skis, but he hasn't been on one. Several of the Easter egg people said, independently of each other, that by the end of this miniseries, we really do need to have seen, at the very least, Mobius on a jet ski, maybe both Mobius and Loki on jet ski. On a jet ski. And Mobius gets out the kablooey and they talk about, Do you have candy on Asgard? Grapes? Nuts? No wonder you're so bitter. Indeed. I mean, I hope they at least have, like, macadamia or, you know, something exciting. Now, let's see. And I like Hunter B-15 won't let Loki go armed. And one of the Easter egg people pointed out, they had to time that because she starts walking into the the overall shot, like maybe 10 seconds before she reaches Loki and grabs the, so, you know, they had to make sure that she had time to walk all the way through, all, all the way up to before he gets, you know, before he gets out the, the two knives, or Mobius hands him the knives, because if she saw that and she wasn't standing, you know, she wasn't already walking past him at that, 
she would have to like speed up and it wouldn't have been quite as funny. Twenty fifty looks about as apocalyptic as we expect it to be in real life. And Mobius and Hunter B fifteen essentially argue over jurisdiction. Like it's it's just pure like politics or red tape or whatever it's called. And the evil Loki variant is watching the TVA people through the cameras, clever, and leaves a time reset charge. And you know, at, at the time I wasn't sure if that was to like defeat the Minutemen. I mean, do we know what it does to people that it touches? Does it I mean I mean living people. We've seen it remove dead people. I'm not entirely sure we, we do know. Anyway, the the yeah, either it will be defeated or at least they'll have nothing to go on. But yeah, it's such it's such a low-key move. It you know, to, to leave a, a trap like that. Now let's And Loki can't be sure that the, the hurricane shopping Azalea lover couldn't be him. And Hunter B-15 is taken over by the variant, very clever. And they found Hunter C-20. And, you know, I, I forget who, what, one, one of these right people pointed out that, you know, she's sitting there just repeating the same thing over and over, similar to how Eric Selby went kind of nuts when he had Loki in his head for a while. The two Lokis exchange barbs. And 2012 Loki offers evil Loki that they work together. God, now I understand why Thor found me so annoying. Very similar to Steve Rogers in Endgame. I guess they're just they're they're doing this. They're they're going to yeah. And You really do love to hear yourself talk. In fact, you might even say it's been his lifelong ambition. I quite like the fight between 2012 Loki and the, the really big guy just throwing Loki around like a rag doll. Those dog toys are very cute. I appreciate that even in the second episode, 2012 Loki catches up to evil Loki. Serious plot progression since there are apparently only six episodes of this. Although they are talking about a possible second season. And we see that it is Lady Loki, and she had rigged up all of the reset charges that she stole. And blow, you know, they, they start off a bunch of divergent branching paths. Very clever. And Loki runs through the portal that Lady Loki, Lady Loki opened and closes right behind Twinchel Loki, leaving Mobius behind. And, you know, we now have to wonder. Is he really going to work with Lady Loki, or is he still devoted to this idea that, you know, here's a chance of trying to redeem himself? He can't, he can't go back to his own timeline, so he can't, you know, the the yeah. The the original Loki will go through the arc that he went through, but here 2012 Loki has a chance to, ah, what's the word? To to sort of stop some evil that he is partially responsible for since this is a variant of Loki. Now some of these right people think that that is not Lady Loki, it's the second enchantress posing as Loki. I could see that. Certainly this is very early to give away the identity of the main villain for a show that is partially based or you know yeah partially about mystery. So far I'm pretty happy with the amount of Loki mischief per episode Loving more Miss Minutes. I hope we get even more. And yeah, as as a quick, one of the things that some people point to as you know, one of the things of why it might be Enchantress instead of Lady Loki is that she's blonde instead of dark hair, which, you know, yeah, Lady Loki in the comics and Loki in general tends to be dark haired, but the the. Uh, Another thing they point to is that if you look at the, so that's the thing, you always got to worry about credits. In the end credits, when you, when you look at the, I think it's the, I think it's the, the dubbed version. In, you know, instead of saying Lady Loki, it says the, the name that is the name of the enchantress. I, right now, I don't remember. Sylvia, maybe? I, I, I forget, but. 
And that is it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.